Hi, welcome to Teardown Tuesday. Where is it? Is it up my sleeve? No, it's on my shirt here. Well, not actually this. This is just the uh, little microphone for it. What we're going to tear down is the Sennheiser G3. It's called wireless microphone uh, for camcorders and other gear. It's pretty much the duck's guts in the industry for wireless microphones. Real expensive bit of kit. Goes for over uh, $600 dollars or thereabouts. Now, um, I have had, uh, well, I do have uh, wireless uh, microphones in the past. I've used a, an Asden brand and they were really crap. And then I switched to this Audio-Technica Pro 88 and uh, it's kind of done the job for a few videos, but it doesn't have a property and proper uh, diversity receiver on it. And well, Everyone raves about this. This is the number one in the industry. Apparently, the Sennheiser G3. Uh, so I thought we'd take a look inside, not only the uh, belt clip uh, receiver here, uh, sorry, the transmitter, but also the receiver, which is on top of my camera. Let's go. And yes, sorry, I do already have it uh, powered on here, and I'm actually still using it to record. You can see this cable. This is actually going from the receiver here, the diversity receiver, up to my um, Canon HF G10 camcorder here. And you'll notice that it had a nice little uh, fade-out backlight there on the display. And this thing just oodles quality from the moment I took it out of the box. These things feel like, you know, these things weigh and feel like they're built like a brick dunny. They really do. It weighs probably twice as much. This is the uh, transmitter here. Uh, you know, look at my old uh, uh, Pro 88 here. It's, it, you know, this thing probably weighs like twice as much and is half the size because it's um, built with a die cast um, alloy case on it and it's just oh it really is just a beautiful bit of kit opens up like this. this is not a review i really just literally taken it out of, out of the box before i decided to do a tear down here so i don't even know how to uh, use it properly but it's all like uh, programmable graphic display it's got battery indicators fantastic runs on standard uh double a's for like eight hours or something like that um it's got i think you know dozens and dozens of channels that can do auto searching and auto syncing and all sorts of uh weird and wonderful stuff like that and you can actually set the uh, one thing I really like is that you can set not only you can set the sensitivity here in uh, dB on the uh, transmitter for the mic level, but you can also do the same thing over here on the audio frequency out that goes into the uh, camcorder minus 24 dB. So full flexibility there in terms of actually um, you know using this thing and setting up for your camcorder. I love the little battery door that clicks in place like that. Ah. Oh, really is a nice bit of kit. I love it. And it does come with um, uh, the camcorder uh, shoe attachment uh, thing as well. This is the SK100 body pack transmitter, effectively uh, known like as the G3. Nobody calls it the, uh, uh, you know, the 100 or whatever. And the EK100 diversity receiver, property, proper diversity receiver design so that, uh, you know, it doesn't uh, drop out like the other crap ones do and things like that. So absolute first class. Um, RF quality, designed in Germany, assembled in the USA, and disassembled in Australia. Beauty. Other thing I really like is the proper threaded 3.5mm uh, uh, TRS jack on these things so they can't accidentally come out. Many times I've um, accidentally plugged uh, my mic in, you know, halfway and I was getting something on the LCD but it was picking up crap loads of 50 hertz hum and things like that and uh, it just really is quite nice. Nice little uh, flexible antenna there on the thing so really, you know, impossible to break these suckers pretty much and a uh, mute and a mic button there. Nice. And I do believe they can take uh, rechargeable, uh, like you can get uh, cradles or something, because they look like uh, recharger uh, tabs to me if you put rechargeable batteries in the thing. And oh, as I said, just feels first class, that die, die cast alloy uh, case, just fantastic. And the quality of the battery contacts and the uh, the hinge and the whole, the whole works, it just feels like you're getting your money's worth, it really does. And this is a uh, UHF a model, of course, better than the uh, lower frequency VHF ones, which I've uh, used before. This uh, particular one is um, 626 to 668 megahertz. I'm not sure if it uh, uh, changes in different regions. This is the uh, Australian model, so it may actually differ in that respect. 
So it looks like we've got some uh, Torx uh, screwdrivers here, uh, designed in Germany of course, so I'm going to use my uh, Made in Germany Weir screwdrivers. It's curious that the Germans outsource to the USA. Ah, uh, it's hilarious. Anyway, let's uh, crack this sucker open and see what's in it. Hopefully we'll be able to get in with just these uh, four screws here perhaps. We'll see. I'm of course not... Uh, no, I switched to my internal mic on my Canon uh, camcorder, of course, as I do for most start uh, teardowns. But, uh, if this thing works really well, I might uh, use it more for the more for just general purpose in the blog. But generally, I got it for uh, field use. So let's whip these screws out. Now I expect first class uh, quality design and build quality in here. In here, maybe some RS shielding, although it's got the diecast uh, case on the thing. Hey, that's that's popping open real easy. It'll be all SMD, of course, and ah, oh, there it is. Look at that. Ah, oh, beautiful. The whole thing just hinges out. The whole case. Oh, fantastic. You see the uh, listen. There we go, nice die cast alloy case, beautiful. Ah, oh, and that looks like uh, basic two ball construction. Don't know if there might, no, I think, no, there's a ribbon cable connecting, fine pitch ribbon connecting the two boards. The LCD is probably mounted on the backside of that one though, I'd say, but uh, that is looking very nice right off the bat. I rather like that. And of course, their threaded metal insert uh, screws right down into the um, molded and uh, then tapped uh, threads in the die cast case there. Just beautiful quality. Ah, oh, I love it. And it's all sort of hinged on the one point there. It is a bit loose like that, but of course, once it's all uh, screwed in, it's going to be rock solid, but that's uh, very nice. And there's the RF board like that just two metal uh, cans with the uh, some surface mount uh, circuitry on the back the antenna is uh, soldered directly onto the board like that so it just pops out and hinges open in one fell swoop like that that is just beautiful design no problems at all no signs of any bodges or anything like that yet so ah oh, it's looking beautifully designed and you'll notice that uh, side charging contacts there, just you know, folded right angles and soldered directly into the board. Really quite beefy. Excellent. And on the back of the main transmitter board there, no surprises for finding an analog device's ADF4117. That's a 1.2 gigahertz uh, phase lock loop. And that generates the uh, local oscillator frequency for, for the transmitter. It's a digital um, interface device, uh, serial interface. So that's how the microprocessor in this thing can uh, select the required uh, frequency. Just uh, you know, send the serial command to choose your local oscillator frequency. Too easy. And there's our uh, antenna output over there, you can see, and look at that little puppy. Nice little distributed, or well, part of a distributed uh, element uh, filter going on there, uh, pretty much. Just basically coming out of there. I'm not sure what, you know, that's probably the RF output uh, power transistor or something like that. I'm not going to uh, decode those uh, SOT23 uh, devices or anything like that. Um, but yeah, there's not much else on there. Probably some local uh, regulation around here. They're going to have the uh, crystal oscillator associated with that uh, PLL as well somewhere. I'm not sure where that is. Actually, I can't see the oscillator down in there. Is that like a little, that uh, maybe looks like a little choke there. I think that might be a little common mode choke between uh, those things. But yeah, just some power regulation. Got some big uh, tantalums on there. For some huge bulk decoupling and well not a huge amount more there's going to be more in the rf cans on the other side one thing you will notice is all of these uh test pads here all around here these are for uh production level testing after they've assembled the board of course they've got a bed of nails uh tester which this thing would be uh plugged into makes contact with the uh, pogo pins and does all of the rf testing for this thing which you know would not be easy some real expensive production rf test gear there i'm sure and that's inside one of the cans there. Not a huge amount happening. Once again, I'm not going to decode those uh, little uh, SOT23 type uh, devices in there. But, you know, probably some RF uh, transistors or something like that. Little uh, four pin package. You don't see that uh, very often, that's for sure. And just one uh, six pin SOT23 and a whole bunch of passives. And not a huge amount under the other RF can, but we do have ourselves a nice big 
wire wound inductor there. Look at that puppy and some tiny little um, SMD inductors and things like that. So yeah, not a huge amount. You'd have to really get the uh, schematic um, uh, proper to know really what's going on here. And then we'll have a look at what I call like the main uh, processor kind of board. Check this out. We've got is that a4051. There you go. You've got to have some uh, 4000 series uh, CMOS mucks in there. That's for sure. And right, here's a pretty uh, critical component for a high quality wireless mic like this on Semiconductor SA575. And that's a uh, dual channel uh, compander. Well, one channel is a compander. The other channel you can configure as a compander, a compressor, or an auto level uh, gain controller. So really versatile uh, chip for um, uh, you know uh, getting maximum uh, dynamic range out of your audio signal. Awesome. So a compander is basically a combined uh, compressor and expander uh, circuitry, and they're doing that to uh, get the maximum use out of the uh, available dynamic range of this thing. Pretty critical in these microphones, so that they're basically uh, going to automatically bring up the uh, low-level stuff. But there's an art in doing that without amplifying the noise and, and compressing some of that uh, high stuff and things like that. So I, I didn't think this one actually did in the reviews I read didn't actually uh, mention that it had any um, sort of aggressive uh, uh, compression or, uh, you know, dynamic range compression or anything like that. So, yeah, not exactly sure how they implement it in here and how aggressive it actually is. Up there we've got a uh, Japan Radio Corp JRC4580, pretty uh, jelly bean sort of op amp, uh, nothing much going along there. Once again, probably uh, lots of uh, tantalum, maybe some uh, local regulation and stuff like that. It looks like probably um, that might be part of the battery uh, switch mode or the uh, charging uh, circuitry, linear technology charging circuit being that it's right near the charges there. There we go, going through an input diode and into there. So that's probably part of that charging stuff and uh, not much else happening on top here. We can't find the main processor. It's not there. There's another uh, 4051 marks, but yeah, that's... Uh, main processor must be under the bottom there. Not sure what that one is. It's uh, not branded with uh, anything familiar, so I don't know. I'm going to pop the board out. And look at that. The whole thing just swings out once again. That is just absolutely beautiful product design. I love that. They've thought about how they're going, you know, not designed for servicing, really, but, I, oh, you know, almost like it is uh, back in the old days. I'm not sure that they service these at component level, but, oh, that's just beautiful how it all goes together and all in the one common hinge point there. Oh, and here's our main processor board. Once again, we can't get access to the processor, so it must be under the uh, LCD in there. Just a chip on board LCD. They've got the chip embedded in the top there. Uh, we've got ourselves a uh, crystal oscillator there. Another crystal oscillator here, 4 megahertz. We've got ourselves some uh, tactile uh, dome uh, switches right on the uh, PCB. Yes, that is an infrared uh, transceiver because these things can actually uh, talk to each other via infrared to actually sync. Fantastic. Nice little design touch there. So they actually know that they're on the same frequency and, you know, the, uh, the receiver can uh, know exactly what the transmitter is on and vice versa. Brilliant. Even the front panels all die cast metal. Just gorgeous. And you can see the backlight is just a single LED there going into that light pipe. And that's just fantastic. Very nice even light pipe from a single LED like that. Very impressive. For those playing along at home, that's the LCD model number. And there we go, a fairly beefy little processor in this thing for what it's got to do, really. It's an NXP um, LPC2364, and that's a, a 72 megahertz ARM7 processor, 128K of flash. It's got uh, all sorts of peripherals built in, 10-bit ADCs and 10-bit DACs and PWMs and all sorts of stuff. It's a lot more powerful than I would have expected. Uh, for something like this. So, I don't know, you've got to wonder uh, what sort of uh, processing this thing is actually doing. And of course, they're most likely not running that thing at the full uh, 72 megahertz capability, of course. It, you know, that'd be probably gross overkill on a um, product like this where battery life is pretty power mount. But this is quite a low power uh, processor, very efficient in terms of, uh, you know, number of MIPS per watts.
So after the impressive little uh, transmitter there, let's take a look at the receiver. And as I said, this is a true diversity receiver. So it, uh, you know, if you're going to get a wireless mic, a real, the real proper ones have diversity receivers in there. And what that means, it's just a, a um, there's many different types of uh, uh, techniques to uh, diversity receivers, but uh, pretty much it just tries to eliminate, uh, you know, multi-path distortion and stuff like that, which can cause uh, dropouts, which are really annoying on uh, wireless mic systems like this. And here we go. I expect uh, this to be a very similar uh, arrangement to what we had before, of course. So if we get that open here and of course what we expect to find the interesting thing about a diversity receiver is that it's got to have dual antennas and of course this only has one antenna so you've got to wonder where the other one is hmm I think we'll find out shortly pretty sure I know where it is because there's only one and with this die cast case of course it can't be inside there so how can we have a second antenna in this thing well the only other output here is the um, AF jack going across there and I bet you your bottom dollar that is going to be used as our second antenna now if I can get this apart whoop yep oh look at that same hinge design beautiful oh what a bobby dazzler aha yeah I was right on the money check it out there we go there's another uh, looks like another distributed element uh, there on the PCB and well, there's another one there But yeah, here's the rece main receiving antenna and then the secondary one going up there through a Little wire that goes up to the shield the outside shield of the output um, Cable which goes to your uh, to your uh, video camera over here So they are using that as the second antenna and that's how they get the uh, uh, diversity uh, feature of this thing and of course um, you'll see some receivers that are diversity they will have uh, you know two separate antenna uh, you know usually one coming out here and one coming out here separated by X uh, distance and well that's another method to do it as well a bit more controlled than this one with just the lead sort of you know hanging out flapping around in the breeze there but still that's obviously going to work quite well as a diversity uh, antenna system and just like before we've got uh, our top RF board here, not uh, a shielded can. Maybe there's a, a can on the other side, but I can't really uh, see it. Uh, may not be, but anyway, here's our input here. We've got maybe an input um, amp over here or something like that. Yeah, we've got some sort of uh, filtering happening around here. We've got a huge big uh, uh, tracer. Is that a ground uh, plane there? Obviously stitched down in there through there's a little Sennheiser logo there on the PCB they've obviously got some uh, via stitching around here to reduce the uh, impedance of the internal layer it's obviously a multi-layer board you can see in here you can actually see the uh, copper on the inner layers down in there inside this thing and uh, yeah so the uh, via stitching all around here they're very common in RF uh, systems just to lower the inductance of the uh, ground plane and the grounding system little uh, ceramic uh, hybrid modules there not sure what they're doing some sort of you know RF uh, device or something like that I don't know AHH no idea if anyone's uh, familiar with those please let us know once again all the um, test pads as well for the automated production test system and no surprises for finding the exact same ADF 4117 in the receiver as well the uh, PLL to get that uh, local oscillator frequency and you can see that uh, connection tab much clearer here. It's a real big fat wide one going over to the uh, shield of the TRS jack there. And to get uh, this board out, I've had to uh, desolder the um, tab there on the TRS jack. And we've got ourselves four metal cans under there. Oh, brilliant. But once again, we're probably not going to find a huge amount interesting under there. There's the top one, very interesting little 8-pin uh, sort of extended uh, SOT23 package. It's not, I don't think it's a SOT23, but yeah, um, with sort of like, you know, power, um, uh, you know, pins coming out either side, sort of double width. Very interesting. And there's the antenna, by the way, with the uh, second diversity uh, pad over there, which I desoldered and uh, coupled in. So they've got... Yeah, one headed off over to here, which is the cam we just looked at over there. And you can see the filtering, uh, the surface mount SMD inductors in there, and uh, the caps and 
all sorts of stuff and under this can not a huge amount uh, interesting another four pin uh, you know power type device under there but of course this isn't a uh, transmitter it's only a uh, receiver so that's interesting and some um, nice huge um, SMD wire wound inductors there aha look at that 230.303 megahertz um, oscillator module there with a uh, no brand name uh, chip it's just got 41 27 there so that's rather in and then 32 uh 44 which doesn't look like a uh, day code you know it wasn't manufactured in uh, uh 1944 that's for sure and the fourth can over here just some more uh, basic stuff as well nice little uh, potted uh inductor there you can see like uh, four turns on that sucker and uh that's about it but yeah it's um just most interesting that they've really uh, gone to town here really belt and braces stuff in terms of uh, you know uh, separating and shielding each section I mean very impressive and no surprises for the same uh, companion chip we saw uh, the uh, companion one in the transmitter you've got to have one here on this side and a, uh, there's another uh, JRC jelly bean op amp and that looks like a, another a JRC op amp probably a TL062 equivalent not going to uh, bother to look that one up and, uh, and a couple of unpopulated uh, devices on this board though so there is there another model I haven't uh, looked offhand I don't know if there's another model there but uh, certainly some unpopulated parts here's a max 4581 um, analog switch nothing really special about there and that's about all she wrote here but on the other side we'll probably find the same NXP processor actually the top side here is rather interesting check this I mean it's all the same you know we've got our infrared uh, to transmitter we've got our um, oscillator there two uh, oscillators here and our single lead diffuser and you know uh, sort of the same stuff happening that we had before but Interestingly, it looks like we have some sort of interlock switch here and over here as well. Check it out. Now, at first I thought it was like a uh, door uh, switch, you know, to make sure the battery door is actually uh, locked in position like that. But it's, you know, it doesn't make contact with that battery door there. So it's certainly not that. And on closer inspection, no, it's not a switch in itself. Um, it's just a surface mount spring contact like that. Maybe some um, spring contact grounding going to the front panel. Yep, exactly the same NXP uh, processor on here. So, yeah, no surprises because you're going to uh, reduce your bill of materials. You use it on one, eh, you're going to use it on the other, even though uh, you may not need uh, the same capability in both. So that's the Sennheiser G3 wireless microphone system and I am very impressed as you probably uh, could tell with the design and build quality of these things absolutely first class the design of the hinging construction and how that all goes together it's just beautiful first class quality uh, components so you certainly do get your money's worth your what is it, 600 bucks worth of these things you know they're really expensive but Hey, you can't beat quality like this. Just absolutely fantastic. They're built like a brick dunny. I reckon they'll last forever. Fantastic. So there you go. I hope you enjoyed that uh, teardown of this uh, Sennheiser designed in Germany, made in the USA, disassembled in Australia. Sennheiser G3. If you want to discuss it, jump on over to the EV blog forum. The links, as always, are down below. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. But the YouTube system is just shit these days. Anyway... Catch you next time.